match and you know we're, we're lucky to be here at Ponce. Thank you coach congratulations go thank celebrate. You. Thank you. What a moment for the Penn State Nittany Lions claiming a share of the Big Ten title big day for the program big day for all coming up next. It's more volleyball as Purdue takes on Washington. For Emily Eman and our entire Big Ten Network crew, I'm Michelle McMahon saying so long from Happy Valley. Thanks so much for watching and spending part of your day with us. We'll send it over to Elise Woodward and Nicole Branagh for the call. Now 18 and one after the 3-1 Penn State win over Nebraska. Woo. It was a battle. I mean, both of those teams playing such a high level elite teams. Just duking it out. And you just never know. They could meet again in the postseason. That's the scary part. As we are just underway from here in Seattle. Huskies getting on the board first on senior day seven seniors being honored today three are academically seniors they can return they have eligibility as eva hudson gets blocked not once but twice tries it again this time the roll shot and the husky defense scrambling out to hudson again and she's blocked and that one ricochets all the way to the back line and is in. And the other night against Oregon, actually, early on, as I mentioned in the open, she kind of started a little bit slow. Oregon block was slowing her down, but don't fret. She started tooling the high hands off the block and totally changed that game and ended up with 28 kills. Ooh, out of the middle. That one stung. The pretty play there by Lizzie Carr. Well, Lizzie Carr was a middle blocker before coming in, and this year has been training on the, as a pin hitter. And the serve, clip in the net, and down in for the point. Eva Hudson, just a dominant. Hitter for Purdue, leading the Big Ten in kills. And back-to-back -back aces, 13 and 14 on the season for Hudson. Well, and this is exactly what Coach Shondell told us when we spoke to him about the serving game, is bringing the pressure, disrupting the Huskies' offense. And they have been doing that. All of these last few points have been huge serves. That over, the overpass leading to an easy kill for Raven Colvin, the 6'1 senior middle out of Indianapolis, Indiana. So Purdue grabbing a two-point lead. Tipping that one over is Amani Bush, and the Purdue defense can't catch up to it. Good decision on that set. Could, didn't quite get her feet just where she wanted it to swing at it, but put it in a good spot, catching Lizzie Carr of Purdue. A little bit too tight. And Washington runs a 6-2 system, so now on to the floor. Another setter, Alexis Howry, 5'10 freshman out of Silverton, Oregon. We're in number eight for the dogs. And she comes in as one of the top recruits in the nation, the 17th overall player in last year's recruiting class, according to prepvolleyball.com. Has been splitting time with Molly Wilson. Big swing by Inslee. No touch sails wide. Even though out of system, that was a pretty nice set she dialed up there for Ensley, just trying to attack it a little bit too much going wide. Maddie Ensley in her fifth season here on Montlake at the University of Washington. She was honored before the game. Looks like Purdue thought that might have gone in. Looking at coach, are we gonna challenge it? Or are we gonna wait? What do you think? Oh yeah, that looks like it clips the line for sure. And so, 
Dave Shondell will challenge, challenge the ball that was one in. being in or out. And I think that one will be quickly overturned. Daphne Nelson, referee number one, April Frickle, or excuse me, April Frick is referee number two that's gonna take a look at it. Each coach with a couple Call's of gonna challenges. Be reversed. If you win, Ball you get to keep in. them. Purdue rechanged their challenge. See that clip in any part of the ball touching the line, and it is in. And you slow that one down, and you can tell that it definitely clipped. So Purdue jumping out to a four-point advantage here in Seattle. Well, and as you mentioned, Elise, Washington Huskies running a 6-2, which means they have three hitters in the front row at all times. So you're going to have two different setters, but you've got six hitters that are going to come in and out. So Purdue wants to serve tough, disrupt their offense, and not let them get in the rhythm. Another tough serve by Purdue, and Washington out of system. Inslee trying for the tip, sent right back. And finally, the Huskies able to terminate Q Fletcher, 6'2", fifth year senior. Out of Trinidad in Tobago. First four years of her career at South Carolina. Went into the transfer portal. Actually, talked with Dave Shondell of Purdue before settling here at the University of Washington. Out of the middle. Husky defense block there, but guess what? Looming up at the net, Lizzie Carr, the six foot six red shirt sophomore, waiting for that one. Well, you definitely don't want to have an overpass when she's up at the net. As you mentioned, 6'6". Six, six. What a nice little tip up there. Just not enough. So it's an 8-2 to two Purdue run. Fletcher. Able to send that one down, and the Purdue block leaves a crease. Yeah, that was a strong, aggressive swing attacking the seam, which is the middle of the block there between those players. Hands not closed. Has a lot of power to get that one through. Get back in. Curtis Myers couldn't get it to go. The Huskies keep that one alive. But Eva Hudson finishes that play in a hurry. Well, you could see in that play alone the smart vision that she has to put that tip, although picked up by the Huskies, Gets another opportunity and just slams it down. From the back row, attack, one-on-one, -on -one, just getting it past. One of the most electric players in the Big Ten Conference back to serve. If you have not seen Chloe Shacoin, you want to keep your eye on number two in black. She is a high flyer. There she is on the back. Talking with... Coach Shondell, he said she's an excellent passer. And we saw her with the up on that play. Let's go out wide to Barton. She has to tip. Shacoin was on the 10 foot line out of the back, so the Huskies will get the point. And if you're going to set the back row, you cannot cross that 10 foot line. You can't even touch it. So you can take a look there, see her foot touching it. So that's a violation. But I like how much Purdue is using the back row attack. They're really getting that going early on. So the Huskies close the Boilermaker lead 2 3. Hudson and puts it where the Huskies aren't. Nice little play from Hudson, tipping it into the hole in the Husky defense. Yeah, getting that tip going, establishing it early. Usually she's coming out swinging, but you know, she gets a lot of sets, a lot of swings on the shoulder, a lot of jumps on the legs. Boy, 77 total attacks on Wednesday at Oregon and uh, Boilermakers needed every one of them in the five set victory against the Ducks. In the middle, that is Elise Haney for the Huskies. Now back to Barton and the block was there. Raven Colvin pushing up and over. 
What a nice dynamic move. Take a look at Raven Colvin there in the middle and how she just throws her body kind of there to close the block, sealing that one. And that's not going to be able to be covered going deep in the court. And what a difference maker she has been for Purdue this season. Another block, Colvin up there, this time combining with Taylor Anderson, the setter. Back to back blocks. You see how she's moving over there trying to close it. Doesn't get a piece of that one, but it's still the setup in vision for the hitter, thinking that she's got four hands up. Bush, a good hack at it. And the libero, Ali Hornung, able to keep it up. And the touch against Washington. So Purdue playing well here early. Haven't been perfect, but certainly have come on the road and have started hot 15 to 8 the dominant lead here in the emerald city up in the upper left out of the timeout purdue continuing to add on they are now doubling up the washington huskies well and purdue's putting on the service pressure the huskies are only siding out about 46 percent right now so about four and a half out of ten balls they're getting that side out meaning the serve back Barton rises up and gets another kill for Barton. That is kill number two. Good decision by Barton. She had a little sliver of the line on the block here. These two have been putting up a solid block on her, but turns that thumb down and chisels it off Hudson's outside arm. Barton, the 6'1 sophomore out of Chandler, Arizona. Too much on the serve. Send it over to Purdue. Purdue has really been electric here in the serving game. Three aces. Washington has four service errors. Just have not been able to handle the service game so far in this one. And a tough pass there leads the Huskies out of system. Inslee forced to tip. And Hudson rises, fires, and it hits the floor. I mean, that was such a sharp angle. Just, I mean, just right by Washington's block. Look at this, coming off the net, does the work, gets outside, so she gives some space for this out of system set, but looks like a perfect set to me. Comes in and unloads. Now that angle, avoiding the block entirely. Good up on the heavy ball. Hornig was there for Purdue's defense. In the middle. Getting the kill from Elise Haney, the 6'4 redshirt sophomore, local product, just across Lake Washington in Kirkland. Well, this is what Washington needs to do. They get a free ball, an opportunity here to score, which could be a perfect pass. They dial it up, get the middle going, and a nice crossbody swing to the angle. Colvin. It's the touch and the kill. And Colvin's feeling really good. 14 kills at Oregon on 22 swings. Hit 500 in that match. Known early in her career as dominant blocker. Over 600 career blocks for Colvin. And also got drafted earlier this week. Number seven overall. A big week for Raven Colvin. That's right, the Grand Rapid Rise is a lucky team to have her as a part of it coming up for this next season. One of those Big Ten players all over the place in that draft. And that was good looking swing there by Imani Bush. Imani out of Campbell River, British Columbia. Beautiful lift on that dig and wide open. She just attacks right through the seam. Raven Colvin of Purdue not able to get there in time for that one. A block there, Hudson with the cover and net violation against Julia Hunt. The middle for Washington comes in with a lot of experience here in her freshman season. She's done a nice job in her first season for the dogs. Yeah, coach really excited about this athlete. And it's not easy as a freshman to come in, especially middle blocker position at this elite game so fast. So Fletcher with a big swing and that ball 
Trails down, hits the floor, and the Huskies down by eight. A lot of work to do. Purdue, the first one to 20 here in set one. Purdue out here for the Thanksgiving holidays in the Northwest. And the first ace of the match for the Huskies comes from Maddie Inslee playing her last match in front of the home crowd here. Well, Ensley is second on the team in aces with 27, so make it 28 now for her. She has good pace on the ball. Look at that, dropping, beautiful. Beautiful connection. Back set to Lizzie Carr. She hammers it. Well, Lizzie Carr has been sharing time on that right side a little bit in and out with Kenna Woolard this year, but coach said, look, at the opposite pin, both of these athletes, I'm confident. Carr's been getting the nod the last few. And again, as I mentioned, was a middle blocker, but trained as an opposite, as they were a little bit thin at the pins this year, so had to make some adjustments, and she's doing a very nice job. Quick reflexes on both sides. This rally's still going. Barton finishes it. Wow, I just flew out of my seat on that one. <laughs> Good thing I have a back on it. I had to, I had to hold you back. You like well, that swing. You can see what a game changer it is having her on the court and definitely missed her when she was out with injury. But look at the step close to the ball. Gets her feet there, not reaching with her shoulder, but full extension, beautiful. This time she goes with a tip. Can't get it over the block of Purdue and another block set up. Ortis Myers in the middle of all of that. Well, Purdue middles are really doing a nice job here going back and forth. Look at the one side to the other, but the eye work and decision making, also the footwork, huge part of it. And then finally the technique of getting those hands over and pressing. Her fifth season with Purdue, Ortis Myers, 6'3 redshirt. Senior averaging career highs and kills per set and also blocks per set. Good hustle play to keep that one alive. And Hudson, oh boy, that was a heavy ball. That got on Howry quickly. She had to duck and cover. It sure did, and it looks like Hudson coming in at this approach, like she's gonna crank it angle. She comes up, takes a look, sees the line between that antenna and tackles it. So a timeout by Washington, we'll be back. Every season we give it all. We give our strength. We give our passion. We even give his passion. It's in our blood. As well from the back and playing some pretty sweet defense. She does it all for this team and just, you can see with those numbers there, the load that she carries and just the other night, 77 attempts. Getting the ball in system, out of system. They're throwing it up to her, and she is doing the work. She is a 6'1 junior. And is averaging just under five kills per set, leading the Big Ten in kills. Yeah. Well, I had her down a second, but after that Oregon game, she went right up to number one. And she did. Myers with the kill. And it's nice when you're in your fifth year to be averaging a career high in those numbers. A lot of time spent in the gym. I know Coach Shondell talked about they really had to get better out of the middle. And so they have been working on that Myers this season. Better out of the middle, Raven Colvin. And they go on the slide and another kill from the middle. That's right, well, Gordis Myers, like you said, Coach said this to us, Coach Shondell, is that when they played Oregon last year, that was one of the weaker areas. Oregon knew how to defend them, but they put the work in, and now they're attacking that right side pin. Well, it was all Purdue in set number one, coming out and making it. Such an elite high level night after night, and I, some of those faces you'll probably see on the USA national team one day, too. <laughs> And another kill to start things off for Myers. And the Big Ten led all conferences, 16 picks in the Pro Volleyball Federation draft. Impressive. And the 
you want to follow it on X. As pro volleyball, it, we were talking about it before the match today, just about how the opportunities for these women that play volleyball to earn a living is getting better and better. And certainly there is more work that needs to be done, but you don't have to go overseas anymore, which is a big deal. Yeah, it's huge. It's not for everyone to go overseas. And um, what a great experience to be able to stay here. And as we've seen every year, the collegiate game, the crowds are getting bigger and bigger and it's just overflowing into the professional leagues as well. And these sold out crowds are very fun to play in front of. Well, Purdue 25 to 14 in set one and they have not taken their foot off the gas. They have jumped out to a 3-0 lead. Make it a 4-0 lead. Well, Ava Hudson. Eva, excuse me, Hudson is just on fire again, and it looks like Washington calling a challenge, perhaps, maybe. Well, and I think that ball, that ball looked like it was in. It, it did, and it was so, so over the top there of the block, and it looked like it hit the back line. So, original call ball was in, Washington challenge that the ball was out. So you can see it's a tough angle right there to see of whether or not that hit. But Purdue in the midst of an 8-0 run. If you go back, they ended set one with four straight points and now jumping out to a 4-0 lead here in set two, pending in this challenge. This is hard to tell. From my vantage point, we are above the court it looked as if it hit the line it did we have a good view here but you know they're not asking me though. they're not they're not <laughs> they're, did you get the signal no <laughs> like take it upstairs and ask the broadcaster what they thought <laughs> wonder what our uh, wins and losses would be in that area I don't, I don't know but there's a reason why i don't wear a blue shirt and climb up on a ladder <laughs> That's probably the best angle we're gonna get. Yeah, it does look almost like a little purple there in between, but it's... It's really hard to tell, and that that's... There has to be evidence to overturn, so that could be tough. It was right in front of Leslie Gabriel, Coach Tui as they call her, Tui Asusopo, and for Purdue fans, that name might ring a bell. Her Younger brother, or excuse me, yeah, younger brother Marcus Tubiasa Sopo was the quarterback for the Washington Huskies in that Rose Bowl and went head to head with Purdue and Drew Brees, and the Huskies were able to get that Rose Bowl victory back in the day. Of course, Leslie, an alum here, was a fierce competitor as a middle blocker. He's one of the best in that time of the Pac 10 conference. I know you played with her. She's a wonderful human being, and uh, her family part of the first family of Washington. Oh yeah, I remember, and you're right, I played with Tui. I actually said to you, wait, do we have to call her Coach Gabriel on the air? Can we just go with Tui? We I call can't her? call her anything but Tui. That's just the way it is. And but, I mean, it'd be unbelievable to be coached by her. Just incredible athlete, as you said, but more than that person. After review, the call is gonna stand. Washington loses their challenge. Ball stands, and Washington will lose one of their challenges. They have one left, unless this one goes to five. And the way Purdue is playing right now, whew, they are lights out here in Seattle. We talked about the NCAA committee watching, and Purdue feels like their RPI at 15 is low. They're ranked number nine. As the float serve comes in, handled by Bays. Haney takes a crack at it. Purdue there, and Bays flies in to keep it alive. Hudson right at Barton in the overpass. Big swing there from Haney, but again, Purdue's defense has been rock solid. Inslee right into the block, but she turns it. And the Huskies on the board here in the second set. And a good swing from Ensley there off the block and a nice duck to get out of the way so you don't get tagged by that one. 
And this is what Washington now, keep the ball in, give them a tougher serve, try to get them out of their rhythm. Oh, right off the top of the tape. He's the one with a short serve. And actually, this is what Purdue's head coach told us in before the match is actually Washington, they're a very good serving team. They mix speeds up, they do different locations. Right now, just struggling a little bit with too short when they're trying to go for those short ones. They need to give themselves an opportunity in transition. Good service error for Washington. That's a nice connection. Julia Hunt, the 6'2 freshman from Covington, Kentucky. Had a nice freshman season. She has, and a nice arm. Wow, look at that. Comes in the angle and just whips it cross body. Back to that area one, right back, trying to attack the defender. Played for her mom, Jill, in high school at Holy Cross. Her mom played college volleyball at Bellarmine. And that is how you draw it up. Lizzie Carr going straight down. Well, we've seen Lizzie Carr do this throughout the match so far. But as I mentioned, was a middle. And she's already got the tools and rhythm worked with the setter on those quick attacks to come in that rotation. Goes to tip. Flies around to keep it alive. And then the hitting error gives the point to Washington. So Washington climbs to within three of visiting Purdue. She point a high flyer outside. Can't terminate, and the Huskies come back to get the kill. Beautiful dig, and you're right, Shaquan of Purdue, she has some heat on the ball. She comes up big, especially against Oregon the other night. But what a dig here for Washington and taking advantage of it. And that's an area right now they need to get some point scoring going, meaning when they get the dig, they've got to put it away. Block there and push right to Inslee. Barton, a little side swipe, and that was wide. And so the hitting error will give the point to Purdue. So Raven Colvin, Purdue legacy. Her dad, Roosevelt Colvin, played football at Purdue and then was a 10-year NFL vet, two-time Super Bowl champ, played for the Bears and the Patriots. Then her younger brother, Miles, is also a Purdue bowler maker. So love, love to see the legacy. The All-American honorable mention pick a season ago was first team all Big Ten last year as well. And again, right now, it's that Washington serve. It's just... They gotta get it over the net. We've seen them get some huge digs with Bays there in the left back position, the libero, and they've been able to score, but they get on the kind of a momentum and then that ball in the bottom of the net. It has six service errors for the Huskies, just one for Purdue as Coach Chewy looks on. Barton pushes that one and Hudson gets it up. And now Barton slides to the floor but can't get enough of that one and so Purdue just continues to roll nine to five the lead as they hit 341 so far and the Huskies at just 137. Well, and Purdue's bringing the heat for sure but they definitely are mixing in those tips roll shots everything. Martin hits the tape goes on the Purdue side of the net. Martin good swing and Dig all the way over to Washington side quickly. Fletcher gives it a rip. Chapoin Clock slowed that one down. Barton gives it a whirl, but couldn't get the touch she was looking for right now. And Coach Tui says she will challenge. She already burned one challenge, but the entire team that time looked over and said, touch, touch, at The original call ball was out. Yeah, Washington the challenge, it. and there was a touch on the block. Oh, yeah. That one 
the old finger wiggle even, the giveaway. Even this official can get that call you right there the on the blue shirt under your blazer. So I, I think do. you're channeling some reference. I do, type. I do. Yeah, they're going to take a look at that, and uh, that will be reversed. The call is going to so. be reversed. Washington will retain their challenge. So Washington has one challenge remaining. Purdue still with two. And so it'll be 9-6 Washington. The Huskies 19-10 and 10 overall this season. They're receiving votes in the polls. They got a couple of rank wins this season. One at home against Oregon and then a big one on the road at Minnesota against the former Washington coach, Keegan Cook. Your old stomping grounds, Nicole. That's right. None of these venues are easy to play in because they are packed houses, sold out crowds to go to Minnesota and get that victory. That was a big win for the Huskies. So the Huskies yeah. trying to make a statement here against the top 10 Purdue Boilermakers with the NCAA committee looking on tonight in the final regular season match of the season. And they get the big block to smile about on that play, and they pull to within two. Point again, just giving a rip in the Husky defense. With the up, Warren Bays. What a tough one. That's a tough set there. I don't know if she was expecting that to come at that angle, but just a little bit too tight on the net. Arm followed through. So net for Washington, but that's the kind of rhythm that they can get into and getting the serve over, giving that block a chance. They got a huge block, some good digs there by Lauren Bays in the back row. Bays with a pretty pass. They go to the middle, and that's what Washington is looking for. A nice pass, and then the connection in the middle to Haney. Haney coming up big. Look at this. Beautiful. When you have a three pass, as we call it, that means you can set three different options on that set. And a lot of times they want to go to the middle because they want to establish the middles, hold the, op the other team's middle blocker to open up the pins on the outside to have some one-on-one -on -one opportunities. On the slide. Oh, my goodness. I hope Molly Wilson is okay. She got knocked to the deck by the heat. She has a smile on her face, so that's a good sign. Yikes, that was some good sound, that's for sure. Off the left shoulder and not the face, and I'm sure that's why she was smiling. That was coming in hot. Jenny Inslee with that left hand, Golden hanging in the air, and Parton doing a nice job of getting down for the dig. Now Hudson goes line and Molly Wilson can't quite get that one up. And so Hudson will collect her seventh kill of the match. Nice tempo out to the pin again to Hudson. Yeah, it looks like a little spin on the side could have taken that one out, but hard to know when the speed is coming so fast. Gotta make a good decision. Just popping it over the top there. Elise Haney and her smarts there, hit it where the defense isn't. That's what they say. <laughs> it's tricky like that. Sure is. <laughs> I think everybody wants to hit it 100 miles an hour, but sometimes it's better to take a little heat off and find the floor a different way. That's true, especially oh, after freshman year. You gotta figure out, you can't just hit every ball hard. There's a lot of big blockers out here. That time off the Husky block, the touch. So Taylor Anderson, the six foot one inch sophomore setter out of San Antonio, Texas. Came in last year as a true freshman and earned a starting position. A big swing from Inslee. And the so Huskies hanging around again. They are, and Ensley is another powerful weapon the Huskies have on the pin. She's got a long, heavy arm, brings the heat makes good decisions with her attacks. And you know, it's having that veteran, you know, senior years, it's knowing when to make that good swing. If you don't get the perfect set, making a good decision to not make an error. Oh, excellent dig. Reading that one is the freshman Howry. Yes. And the block is tooled. 
Lindsay Carr. She's had a nice match so far. Look at that dig, keeping it alive. And Carr coming in with another tool on that outside hand. She hits so high. Work is brought to you by State Farm. When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. As Purdue here in the Pacific Northwest, the city of Seattle is where they spent their Thanksgiving, and they said it was a wonderful meal. As you can see, they're all getting ready to get their turkey, whatever they ate. It was a good pregame meal because they have come out and been fantastic here in a tough place to play in Seattle. And another big time swing from Lizzie Carr. Six foot six and the red shirt sophomore is in a groove. Well, and this is what Coach Shondell said last year. They learned they needed to get that opposite side of the net going with offense and getting the slide attack from the middle and getting the opposite car right there going and they've really worked on that this past year and you can tell it's made a difference. Inslee looking for the line and it is wide. So out of the timeout, Purdue continues to roll, building a seven point CAA tournament and the tournament projections according to to Michaela Chester is Nebraska and Penn State, both one seeds. Of course, it was Penn State getting the best of Nebraska earlier today to clinch a share of the Big Ten title. But seven Big Ten teams are ranked. Nine Big Ten teams are in the top 41 of the RPI, and Washington was in the 30s last week. Lost three to one to USC. Their RPI dropped 241. And then finally the Huskies putting it in to the Purdue run. Kirsten Barton making the play for the Huskies. But Washington looking to head back to the NCAA tournament. Of course, they were in the final four in Maddie Inslee's freshman year, the fifth year senior. And 2020 had that experience, and the block set nicely there for Washington's defense. And a, and a good timeout for Washington to take that come out, and Ensley at the line. She has a very powerful serve, and she's putting the pressure on Purdue, which is setting up these huge plays like that block for Barton to get as well. Three aces for Purdue, just one for Washington. Wow. And Ensley on cue, says I'll have another. Look, she is struggling a little bit offensively here in the game, but if you are struggling in an area, don't let it affect other parts. Ensley doing such a nice job chipping in where she can. Her second ace of the match, and the Huskies have shown a little light. With the up, Ensley sticks the fist out and able to get that one over the net. Shakoin, she's been quiet in this game. And now Barton truly the block, a 6-0 Washington run. And this crowd with the approval. Look at this uh, beautiful layout and what range Bayes shows she has. And a nice strong attack off the block. And this is one thing Coach Leslie Gabriel told, you, told us is their team mantra they came up with, which is grit, gratitude, and intention. And those that little momentum shift there for Washington just kind of brought me to that whole talk we had with her, that they've really focused on that this year and competing, going out there every single point. So Inslee trying to skim the net one more time, this time a service error, but the Huskies are within three. on the match. Came back ready to swing on that one. It almost looked like kind of she got powered that one right down and through the block. And right now Washington just struggling with the passing game, getting a lot of out of system sets, those pins. Tipped over, Barton can't quite cover. Nice decision there by Myers. 
Again, going behind the center. In that one, Coach said it's called a J, not a slide all the way to the pin, but a little bit shorter right behind the set. Short serve handled by Haney. Now they go out to Fletcher, and Hudson digs it. Chicoin flips it over the top of the block, and it's down. Chicoin has been pretty quiet. That's just her third kill of the match. She is a high flyer, listed at five foot ten. I don't think she's quite five foot ten. I was down on the floor in flats and looked eye to eye to me, and I'm five nine. You know how we roll as athletes. We get measured with our shoes sure, on. Sure, sure, that's right. But I, I think it's even more impressive for what she's able to do. She can touch 10 foot four. And just hangs in the air with that vertical. Fletcher trying to end the rally and does. And the Huskies climb back to within three. Well, and a long, another long rally, as I mentioned. Purdue number one in digs per set. And with the grit of the Washington Huskies, they are not gonna let a ball drop. So when you get that opportunity, like here, Fletcher going up high. Look at that high attack point she has right off the top of hands. Played really well at Penn State last week. 10 kills did Fletcher. A new addition for the Huskies this season. And that swing, long, asking for a touch, but no, no touch coming from the officials. And so Washington now within two, a 9-3 scoring run by Washington. It was 18 to 10. And Coach Tui called the timeout, and the Huskies have had a lot of fire since the break. Hudson, two hand pushes it over. Misconnection there with Amani Bush, and then Hudson out of the back gets it blocked. Bush, oh, what a good off. The quick reflexes by Purdue, not letting that one hit. And not that time, finally a finish to a long rally. Barton with her ninth kill. Look at these ups, just pinging back and forth, keeping it alive, and again, the Huskies, a free ball opportunity, and they take advantage. Purdue with a timeout, walk as well. The Huskies on a 10-3 scoring run. They trailed by eight points here in set two. It was 18 to 10. Coach Tui called the timeout, and uh, since that time, Washington has stabilized. Maddie Inslee went on a big time run at the service line. It was a 6 0 Husky run. Since that time, it's been back and forth. Barton gets it blocked. Kept alive. On the slide. Husky block. Denies Myers a kill. This time it's Chicoin tooling it off of Amani Bush for the point. Well, and Shaquins comes up big against Oregon the other night, too. At all the crucial points, she came up with huge swings for her team to win that match. And again, right now, I know you said we haven't been saying her name a lot, but that was a huge one. They needed that point. They go to her, and she handles it. And here she is, back to serve. Goes that Barton. She handles it well. Haney with the tip, and Hornig is there. Bays, good up. And that is not what you want at this point in the game, especially with the Huskies gaining that momentum back. Right here, it looks like just not even anyone able to get that free ball over. Waiting for someone to come through, not sure. Miscommunication, got to bounce back. Barton, a good serve. Hudson, wide. And looky here, it is tied up in set. The Huskies coming from eight down to walk this lead back. And 
and the first to 25 with Barton at the service line. So Huskies in front of a nice crowd out here the day after Thanksgiving. They go to Wilmus, nearly a collision with the setter Wilson, and now Bush gives it a go. Out of the middle, Haney, what a block. Big time play, Myers and Hudson celebrating after that rejection. Myers doing the work here, look at eye work, and takes a lean, jumps into the angle on that one to get a huge block. They take the lead back at one. Wilmis tips. Huskies with an answer back. Good vision by Wilmis. Sees that open spot. Blocker not there. Beats it with a strong tip down right behind in that campfire, we call it. Wide open. Hayes mixes up her serve well for the Huskies. Hudson, boy, big swing. Adds to her kill total. She's got nine. Coming off a season high, 28 kills at Oregon. She leads the Big Ten, that's why. Well, and she does an excellent job attacking the high hands. She did against Oregon, and she's doing it again tonight. So set point here for Purdue. Oh, good dig up. And Purdue hangs on. The Huskies rallied from eight down to tie it up. But Purdue makes a couple of clutch plays. And they squeak out the set two win, 25 to 23. And they take a 2-0 lead here in Seattle. Well, the place was amazing. Oh, it's electric. Happy Valley is a very special place and a very tough place to play in. When I was playing against them, they were winning every Big Ten championship year after year, going against their head coach, Katie Schumacher Crawley. And so number four, Penn State, taking down number two, Nebraska. And Nebraska still with a chance to clinch a share of the Big Ten title. They need to beat Maryland tomorrow. So some travel for Nebraska. That match will be at Xfinity Center, which is the basketball arena. They expect a big crowd. Well, and I covered Oregon a couple weeks ago against Nebraska. And there were Nebraska fans there with signs saying, we traveled here because we can't get a ticket in our hometown wow. where, where Nebraska plays. So their fans That's really so do travel awesome. all over the country. And we are underway in set three. We showed you the senior day pictures. And sometimes those ceremonies, you saw the tears and the emotion, it can take a lot out of you. And Washington certainly did not play their best volleyball in that first set. They lost 25 to 14. And then they got better as set two progressed. And, and it was Purdue with a two point win in game two, 25-23. So we'll see now, maybe those emotions have stabilized for Washington, because they certainly have gotten stronger and stronger as this match has gone on. Yeah, and now Audra Wilmus, number one for Washington, is staying on plain front row as well. She is, takes a rip at it and gets the kill. That was a good looking swing. And you know, sometimes if someone's struggling offensively, you just need a little bit of a different look for Purdue. Will Mustaine in the front row now, and look at this angle swing, ripping that one. Too much to handle. She likes to hit cross court. Nice job. Going on two and the block. Colvin there. I <laughs> love that. This doesn't even look like she needs to celebrate it at all. Well, Purdue is, you know, Washington's serving tough, but Purdue is getting some quick reactions on these <laughs> plays. And that was a huge block straight down. I just love Raven's reaction, like, too cool. She is a professional, this is true. 
Jeff Sermon, our producer, telling me in my ear she's a pro, and yes, she will be. Exciting stuff for Raven Colvin. And leading the Big Ten in blocks per set. Uh, she's one of the best that's ever done it at Purdue. 600 plus career blocks, number two all time in the history of Purdue volleyball. Go, 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 go. Incredible. Uh, that is a great connection. Lizzie Carr, they've moved her all over the place and she has got kills at all different spots on the floor. Well, and I love that rotation. They have her coming up in the middle because otherwise she'd be trying to go across half the court. So really nice that they can utilize her on that quick attack and it's been successful, I think, pretty much every time. They set Colvin block back. They set again, and this time she'll get the termination for Purdue. They take a 4-3 lead here in the third set. And you wouldn't know it, but a little off on the tempo, but some hang time here from Colvin on the second one. Take a look. A little bit higher, but makes that reach for it. Not her hardest hit, but doesn't need it. Fletcher gets it sent back by the Boilermaker block. Car taps her chest is my bad. That one sails wide. And so the Huskies off to slow starts at the beginning of set one and set two. This time it is even 4-4 here in set three. Boy, Eva Hudson <laughs> just trying to send that one over and sailed it wide and kind of puts her hand up, say, my bad. Right away, she knew that after she did it a little bit too strong. <laughs> See her reaction. She is so competitive. A fiery competitor for Dave Shondell. Really enjoy watching her play. There we go. And Purdue comes right back. It's knotted up at five as Colvin back to serve. And for the first time today, Zoria Hurd, the DS transfer from Texas A&M onto the floor for the Huskies. Well, and one of the top passers on the team, so nice to get her in there as they've been struggling a little bit in the serve receive. Well, that time, uh, the Huskies getting the quick side out. And it all starts with a beautiful pass. Lane out for that one. Nice lift tempo and one-on-one -on -one block there for Kirsten Barton. Kirsten Barton has to look up, see just one blocker there, and licking her chops. Oh, car goes to the tip, and Barton gets her left hand to send it back. Fletcher on the line and in. And the Huskies with a two-point lead, their largest here at any point in this match. Well, and they've just Im improved each set. Slow and steady, but they've been patient. They haven't been, you know, heads down every time. They still have a smile on their face. Stick together. And the ace from the true freshman, Julia Hunt. She's had a couple of games where she has been dominant. Six aces versus 14th ranked Minnesota in the Husky win. Had five aces versus Northwestern. So when she gets in that groove, she can do damage. Well, she's one of the top acers on the team at 25, now 26 on the season. So she does some good work from the service line. Lizzie Carr, those long arms at 6'6", six, six, getting up and hammering that one. This Purdue team has got weapons all over the floor, and Lizzie Carr has been moved around all over the floor. She rotates off, but Raven Colvin getting in the action, Eva Hudson, of course, Chloe Chacoin. Well, and that's one difference, too, with running a 5-1, I meaning you're having one setter the entire time. We've seen a lot more back row attack from Purdue, and we haven't really seen any unless it was an emergency or out of system for the Huskies, because they always have three hitters up front. A little bit of timeout to get some blood off the floor. 
Not sure who was bleeding. Not. Or maybe it was just a scuff. I'm not sure. It's Eva Hudson trying to dry that floor with her shoes. So Washington coming out hot here in the third set. Five kills on eight swings. They're hitting 500. That one wide from Barton. No touch. Just a little bit too much rotation down the line. Coach not sure if she wants to do a challenge talking to the ref. Oh yeah, that one is well wide. That was a quick reaction on the dig and flung that set right out there. Looking to see perhaps if that one was touched at the net. Right, we play on. Huskies with just one challenge remaining. Purdue has two. Here's Barton. Goes back to that line. Hudson and dives to keep it alive. Well, Myers is doing a nice job setting pin to pin, really running it all here, keeping the Huskies on their toes, not sure where they're gonna set it. Free ball here in trans, miscommunication on the tempo of that one. So it gives Purdue a chance to run this slide attack. Oh, and the ace hits the tape and falls in. And so, the Huskies want to call a timeout as Purdue on a 4-0 score. Welcome in the dog. That's right. Goldie was definitely there cooking the meal. <laughs> Here's Fletcher. Fletcher coin handles it. Can't get the kill she's looking for and trying to go on two was Anderson. Huskies were ready. And now out of the middle, Haney. Fletcher again. And a net violation against Myers. So the Huskies. So Myers trying to reach over a little bit more. With Shacoin there up at the net, coach did say they work a lot on defense around her block, but she is plays a lot higher up than she is. I know we mentioned about 5'10 in height, so not the tallest outside out there, but plays a lot bigger than that. Wilson, good serve, the overpass. Can't get the ace, but the Huskies have it with a chance to terminate, and Wilmis does. The junior from Westland, Oregon. Senior academically. His honor before the game. One pin to the next, and Wilmus is delivering, has an opening in the block and puts it away. Chicoin, kind of a unique approach, double hopped. Lock sends it back to Washington, and now Barton tools the big block with Myers and Anderson for the Husky point. And they retake the lead, 11-10. Yeah, this is a good attack angle here from Barton going down and swiping that one. You can see her arm kind of turning out of bounds there, trying to swipe the ball right off Purdue's hands. Oh, and another misconnection. Anderson trying to hit Myers on the slide, and that one sailed a bit. Timing not there. Well, and that connection, they put so much work, extra reps in right here. Looks like she's going for the J, as we mentioned earlier, which is right behind the setter, coach told us, and the slide. Hudson tracks that one down, and now the free ball put over. Can Washington terminate? Yes. Barton, double-digit kills. Now she's got a dozen. Only player on either side that is in double figures and kills. And so another timeout called. Purdue gonna talk about next Saturday. The two new members of the Big Ten.
Starting Big Ten play against them each other and Barton with the 12 kills and eight digs working on a double double and keeping the Huskies alive out of the timeout. The five at nothing scoring run for Washington is stopped. And there's that connection with Anderson and Myers right there going back on the slide even though they had that mistake before just going right back to it moving forward. Shacoin, the sophomore, the number one recruit in America as a senior in high school. Wilmis, another good looking swing. And Hudson says, thank you very much. Tips it over and just waterfalls down to the deck. I mean, a lot of people would want to go up and rip that one, but she takes a one, two step close and kind of misses it a little bit and kind of like, well, all right, I'll give you a smile. <laughs> It's still a kill, no matter what it looks like. That one will go down as a kill in the scorebook. <laughs> and a point for Purdue, and they're within one. The middle connection for Elise Haney is there. She's really doing some nice work, getting off the net, going up strong every single time. Another nice pass. And again, that same angle. Purdue not making that adjustment and taking it away. She's having a lot of success with that exact hit. Elise Haney from Lake Washington High School, just about 20 minutes from Washington's campus. So anybody that needed that turkey potatoes and stuffing yesterday, they got their fill as Purdue. Got a chance to smile on that play from the sophomore setter, Taylor Anderson. She was ranked as the number one setter as a senior in high school in the nation by Prep Dig. And boy, what an addition she has been to this Purdue program. Has been a starter almost from the jump last year. Sweet 16 for Purdue a year ago with a very young roster. And Dave Shondell says this is his most competitive team. Sweet 16 a year ago, they bring back so many key pieces. This is a team that could make a deep run in the tournament. <laughs> Up at the net, Bush able to tip it by the block. Hudson takes a crack at it, and the Husky block is big. Perfect timing for a block there. Huskies closing the block, hands pressed over. Nice and low, not reaching for You can see four there in the white jersey. Amani Bush, good left hand press over that one, keeping it in. So the Huskies with a three point lead. They're down two sets to none here on their home floor. The block is there again. Five blocks now for the Huskies. And they have come alive. Slow to start in this match, but they've just gotten better and better and their largest lead now at four a 9-3 scoring run for the huskies tipped over wilmis has been a nice spark off the bench the purdue defense flying around to keep that one up So that one called a double over. So this year we had a new rule change where you can double the ball. On the second contact, it stays on your side or the first, but you cannot double it if you're putting the ball across the net onto the other side. So Purdue wants the timeout, a 3-0 Washington scoring run. They take a five-point lead, and this is what you were talking about on the double hit, Nicole. A nice up, but right here, and Purdue, yeah, just having a little communication here, but see how the ball is spinning. If you're gonna set it over the net on the third touch, it has to be perfect. But the other contacts on your own side, one and two, you are allowed to have that double on those touches. And right now, it's just for Purdue to settle in. Washington is gaining momentum. Their service pressure is a lot tougher than we've seen since the beginning of this match. And increasing their play, their touches. And set one, I remember, 
the ball kind of flinging off their block, no one being there. Now Washington is actually getting under that ball and keeping it alive. Yeah, their block has been much more active. The Huskies on a 10-3 scoring run, trying to get their 20th win of the season and trying to get the attention of the NCAA selection committee today in this final game of the regular season. Both these teams trying to, both these teams trying to make that statement So the Big Show delivers highlights, interviews, and complete analysis following a busy day around the conference tonight at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. And there will be a lot to see. Nebraska, Penn State in a showdown. And it was the Nittany Lions punching a share of the Big Ten title for the first time since 2017. Wilmis dug up nicely by McAleer. Rally continues, Bush. Hudson, good up by the center, Molly Wilson. And a touch at the net. And it will be a Purdue point, Colvin putting it down. Just getting a little touch on that one. But Washington really getting some good digs here. So Purdue puts an end to the Washington scoring run. Bush. Dug up. Nice coin. Good cover there by Carr. Bush with a big hammer still alive, and then it drops down. And Monty Bush. She is doing well. She is a dynamic athlete. She can score when they give her the ball. Doing a nice job, waiting on that set, coming in with a strong approach. That angle wide open for her attack. Her dad, Michael Bush, big time Washington State Cougar, two sport athlete. She grew up just north of the border. She's Canadian and came to Washington. And the Huskies have extended the lead to six. Alexis Howry. Freshman two-time Gatorade State Player of the Year in the state of Oregon at the service line for Washington. Well, she's one of their strongest servers, so this is a good rotation for them with her at the line and with power and heat like that in the front row. Why not? Fletcher is just doing an incredible job at the net when she gets it. Look at that attack, high reach, straight down. And no matter what, when Washington was down at the beginning, their energy and their level was always up, which I really appreciated. They didn't get down. And look at that huge block for uh, Amani Bush. Yeah, reaching up and over. It's just so good to see her back on the court. Missed all of last season with a shoulder injury. Said she had to do some soul searching. Returned in May, full strength. As a sophomore, she was all Pac-12 honorable mention. And then had to deal with that setback. Purdue with the side out. But it is nice. She does have the opportunity to return for a final season of eligibility next year, does Amani Bush. That would be a nice athlete to have back, that's for sure. So a seven point Husky lead, trying to close out her first seat. Both these squads can sit back after this and get ready for Selection Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. Both these squads will find out their fate in the postseason. Bush, a heavy ball right at the face of Hudson. She gets her hands up to protect herself and keeps it up. And then just a miss hit by Fletcher into the net. 
Yeah, just a little bit farther off the net than she thought. Hit down on it, trying to attack that angle. Paige, she was as close as she was to be able to get on top of that. A 4-0 scoring run for Purdue, and they've closed the gap to four. Morning underneath that one. She really moved into that one. What a dig. A 5-0 scoring run. So a good dig by Hornung and the senior libero keeping the play alive and then terminated. Ensley coming back in for Washington Huskies, so she'll be back in the front row here. Bush, good swing. Had to take a really long approach, that set. It was a tough pass and the assist up to the net. Bush definitely bettered that ball. And just not enough. A little bit down on that attack. Came down into the net. And for Purdue, also a sub. They've got a new setter in. Ali Shondell, number 11 for Purdue. Coming in for Taylor Anderson. Coach Shondell is her uncle. Her dad was the associate head coach at Purdue for 20 years. And so the scoring run continuing for Purdue. They have closed the gap to just two. And it's the errors right now. It's the unforced errors. Washington's got to control those, get a good pass right now, and be able to run their offense. And Purdue trying to sneak out of here. The ace, Colvin, getting hugged by her teammates. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. And that serve was lucky and good. Off the tape, falling just inbounds, and Purdue a 3-0 scoring run. It was all Washington. And they have battled back, looking to tie it up here in set three and keep hopes alive of a sweep. Fletcher able to terminate. Shondell can't dig that one out. So a set point coming up for Washington. The crowd in the house getting up, putting their W's in the air. This is the custom here inside Alaska Airlines Arena. Carr trying to hit off hands, but block solid. Hudson, the good up. Chicoin. You mentioned it. They go to her in clutch moments. Had to have the kill to stay alive, and they get it. What a dig. Look at that. Taking the time, waiting for the set to come down, and gets it all the way out to the pin. And Chicoin making a good decision on what kind of heat she wants to put on that ball. Short serve, pretty pass from Barton. Oh, it trailed into the net. And again, Shacoin back to back hammers. And the Huskies on that tight overpass, because they have a back row setter at all times, they can't go up and dump it over or try to challenge the block. So that giving the opportunity there for Purdue. Purdue tying this one up. Couple of points away from a sweep. And instead, the Huskies get the kill from Fletcher. And she is in double figures now. Ten kills for Fletcher. That was a sweet cut shot coming in right past the block. Had some nice side spin on it to help it get down faster. She really is doing a nice job. Second in attempts after Barton with 30. So set point number three for Washington. Hudson out of the back. Wilson picks it out. Oh, Wilmis hits the antenna. The crowd here saw that ball drop to the court, but the antenna was pinged. 
little bit wider on this out of system set. And Wilmus not able to get around it and keep that one in. Knotted up at 25. The number nine team in America, the Purdue Boilermakers here in Seattle. And Barton makes the play for Washington. Set point number four. Martin trying to end this one for Washington. Here in set three. Hudson hammered it. You can see she gave a big shout out there to her libero. Allie Hornung with a perfect pass in crunch time. Look at that, sliding her body to stay in front of it. Sets this one up, Hudson with two in front of her, but look at that, giving props where they're due. Knotted up again, tied at 26 all. Bush has to get to that one and can't. And Purdue takes the lead for match point number one. They trailed 22 to 16 in this match. Did not die, and now they're looking to get out of Seattle with a sweep. Bush. Gets the touch and ties the score up again. Well, Washington is definitely showing their grit tonight. They have come back from a slow start and are here neck and neck with one of the top teams in the country. Coach Gabriel is saying she knows she's heard as the service error from Bayes leaves it short. That Nobody wants to face them in the NCAA no. tournament. Especially now, they're finally getting help, and we've seen what Kirsten Barton can do. 13 kills for the Huskies back in the lineup. And her squad can play with anybody when they are healthy. Here is Barton with the pass. Wilmis can't terminate. Nice dig from Chicoin. Match point here for Purdue. Can they close it? Hudson. Bush gets it over. Punched up and over. Hudson says night, night. She finishes it. The Huskies doing everything they can to keep it alive. They extend set three, 29 to 27, Purdue. That was gritty. Purdue trailing 22 to 16, and they fight back to take set three and get the sweep. Look at the ups on both sides here. The grit on defense from the Huskies. But Hudson doing what she's been doing all season and all career, delivering when they need it to finish it off. She had 77 attacks at Oregon in the reverse sweep. Tonight, 13 kills, 45 swings. And she gets the last kill down. Dave Shondell in his 22nd year, smiling about that one. We'll be back. Yeah. I'm going to get a board. 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 I'm going to I'm <laughs> 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 I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
வீட்டுல உட்காரு 